Hello everybody, welcome back to Altengrad to episode 7. Last week we have been talking about the palaces and all kinds of languages, how they treat these kinds of buildings, how they describe them. And we also obviously built the palace, so all the surroundings of the palace in the Altengrad city as well. So we have built the vineyard, the gardens, and uh, just made the place very, very nice with some detailing. Now today we will move to a completely opposite part of the city. We will build a building that's uh, very important to every city in this time period and has been for quite some time already. I'm obviously talking about the train station. Now before we build the train station uh, we must do some planning because Building a train station is a huge, uh, huge choice, uh, design choice, basically, in city skylines and in real life as well. Now, in real life, it was obviously a bit, uh, bit clearer, let's say, how a train station needed to be built because the city was already standing, right? But in Altengrad, the situation is very much different because the city is not really standing, is it? We need to first uh, figure out how the old, old city is going to be. And that's how I, that's why I built this road, kind of uh, encircling this part of the old, old town. I'm, 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 you know, saying old, old town because the old, like the oldest part of the city was probably surrounded by some city gates. That's probably where they used to be on this, on this road, where I'm putting it right now. But uh, there might have been some different older parts of the city that, uh, you know, were probably past these city gates and uh, uh, maybe created some different districts and uh, they might have had uh, some modern walls and all those kinds of things. So uh, right now I'm planning uh, to build the really oldest part of the city, uh, you know, in this district where I'm obviously putting this road. But uh, today we are not really going to do that. I'm just, I'm just doing those plans because I really need that finished, I really need that, you know, figured out before I move to build a train station. Because a train station, back in the day, it might have been built by destroying, you know, whole districts of the city. But usually, especially in the cities that I know, uh, train stations were not really all that super destructive. Uh, they obviously, uh, there were some buildings that had to, had to go away, but uh, usually train stations were built around the city. Now, in today's, today's, you know, age, we usually have main train stations in the centers of the city. And that's mostly because uh, the, tr the train stations back in the day were just, uh, you know, built around. So the city kind of grew uh, past the train station from the direction of the old, old towns. So today, the main train stations, the really historic train stations that we have in, in many central European cities, are pretty much in the downtown already. But that was not always the case. Anyway, what am I building over here? So, at first, I did some sort of a square, like a start of the square. But uh, as with most of my episodes, I'm starting to build something and uh, then I'm going to realize that it's pretty much just the start of a different project. So, I'm going to move to something else. So, this square is going to be finished only right here where we have the train station building but further into the old town we're not we're not going to really do this uh, square today but we'll probably take a look at it uh, next week so today we will do this part of the square like i said that's where we are going to build the train station building so the train station building is going to be positioned on the outside of the old town like i explained uh, the reasons why, and uh, the train tracks are kind of going to follow the edges of the old town as well. Not directly, obviously, we are going to have them go uh, slightly somewhere else, and we are going to do multiple tracks, not just this one that uh, this train station is on, but that's all for the future episodes. And I'm, I'm probably going to talk a lot more about uh, railroad infrastructure of the city, and maybe even real life of this time period as well. So. We are building a main train station, a train station that uh, at this day and age that we are currently in, 1920s, something like that, is probably already a main train station, but obviously it's going to be a lot more popular as we progress further in time. So we are not really going to do all that many platforms today, and uh, we are also not really going to do all that many tracks, different kinds of, you know, sidings, is that what you call it in English? And we are also not going to finish this train, train, the tracks going from the train station in all directions. I'm only going to follow it from uh, one direction and uh, just finish it all the way to the edge of the map so we can finally see some trains going into the city, right? So that's exactly what I'm doing in here. I'm just finishing some of these connections on this side of the train station, but the opposite side we're going to 
upkeep for some uh, future future episodes all right so i'm obviously using the railway replacer mod and all the tracks that uh, go with it because it's absolutely amazing as you can see these tracks look uh, much much better than what we have in the vanilla game and even some well i don't really want to offend anyone but most of the tracks that you can find in the workshop unrelated to this mod and the biggest uh, biggest uh, you know selling point of these tracks is that you can make very nice looking junctions because uh, in particular these tracks they don't have models for nodes so you have to make them like uh, you know specifically oriented towards each other but when you do you are rewarded with uh, amazing looking super realistic uh, uh, junctions more more realistic than you would ever have with the vanilla tracks or similar kinds of tracks right so you know if you are using this railway replacer mod and many of you do then you probably know what i'm talking about right anyway i'm just finishing up some of these uh, blocks of buildings uh, on the side of the square we're not really going to finish the square like i mentioned but uh, we obviously need to have some sort of buildings in here to finish at least the the looks of the upper point of the square now the train station itself the building of the train station i really wanted to have an elevated train station at this point because uh, i really want to have the tracks going from the train stations go over the roads and tram uh, tracks uh, you know so that the train station needs to be elevated there's just no way around it right i don't want to have any any level crossings inside the downtown what is probably going to become a downtown as we progress further in time so i don't really enjoy the the looks of uh, all the all the elevated train stations in the in the workshop there are some very nice looking don't get me wrong there are some very nice looking train stations in the workshop elevated ones but uh, i was using the one from the netherlands uh, from amsterdam i think i'm not exactly sure about that but uh, it was just too big it had way too many tracks uh, more than i could need at this point and uh, it also didn't really feel right you know architectural architecturally speaking but uh, yeah i was i was kind of not sure what to do here so i decided to use this train station this one is not elevated or at least the tracks are not elevated and uh, i had to make it elevated so that's exactly why i'm doing these stairs in here to cover this elevation so the train station is going to be uh you know more uh, on, on a separate level from the square it's going to be on a higher level now you probably might you might know this train station from real life it's uh, it's a train station from the city of altenburg yeah that i said it right i'm always confusing these two cities now obviously altenburg is a city from real life but uh Altengrad is probably its sister city or something like that. So that's why they have the same looking train stations, right? Now, this train station is exactly what I was looking for, for, for from architectural point of view. It's, uh, it's very, very similar to all kinds of train stations, really, in Central Europe. It, it really follows this one uh, particular style when it has the main building, which obviously has many uh, more floors than the rest of the area, and then kind of slightly larger buildings on the sides. It's a very, very common thing for Central European train stations. You can see it all the time in here. So we're moving now into the road editor once again. And in here, just like I explained in the, in the tutorial video that I recently posted, I'm doing these custom roads to have much, much better looking tram intersections for trams in particular. Now, I should probably not really, you know, say this because it's not really all that super noticeable, but I'm probably going to mention this just in case you pointed out in the comments that I forget about it, that I forgot about it. I did not put the cables for the tram tracks in here. So sorry about that, but uh, I did not even notice it until I was uh, cutting this video. So it's not really all that super noticeable detail that the wires are missing from the intersection, just from the intersection, not really these uh, rest of the tracks. So, you know, if you, if you notice it, and you probably will because I just mentioned it, then yeah, I'm sorry, but uh, it's just an oversight from my part. But anyway, we need to we need to finish the rest of this place so while i was explaining that i was already finishing the place the level the terrain in front of the main train station right now it's just concrete but we are obviously going to put uh cobblestone on on top of it now we are back with this intersection i really struggled with this intersection by the way i took a took an inspiration from real life again uh, i can probably mention that uh, already that i took an inspiration from the city of brno which is the second largest city in the Czech Republic. And it also has 
uh, this very very similar looking bridge. I was really looking at it when when building this place because I kind of liked it. It's it's not exactly the nicest place in the town. It's it's kind of dirty and you know painted all over the place and all those kinds of things. But uh, you know back in the day it was probably looking very very nice. So that's exactly what I did in here. The bridge in particular in the real life also has these uh, portals or arches for each individual lane. So for every single lane of the tram tracks that go through it and obviously pedestrians have their own arch through the bridge and also cars. And the bridge itself is kind of low so it's very old obviously. It was built there probably all the way back when the first uh, tra train tracks were laid in there so you know they were very old but uh, very nice looking from uh, I don't know technical point of view let's say. Probably not that super aesthetical these days but uh, oh well we can't have all the nice things right. Anyway I needed to finish some of the buildings around the train stations. I actually decided to use some of port some parts of the train station building like you can see here. I just took procedural objects and basically made all the rest of the buildings disappear from the train station complex and only use this part of it as this uh, side building to finish up this block of buildings. Now the real life thing, the real life bridge, uh, like I explained in the in the city, has uh, a very nice, uh, I'm not sure how to call it, like a block of buildings leading from the streets that are parallel to the tram tra uh, train tracks and kind of curving towards the uh, the bridge itself. It's, it's a really nice uh, from technical point of view, like I said, it's uh, it's very unified. The the architectural style of the bridge and the buildings around it are very very similar. I can't obviously do that in city skylines because I would need to have a very specific set of assets, which uh, I don't have. Obviously, I just have the bridge and then some random buildings around it. So I kind of have to make do with uh, what I have at my disposal. So hopefully it's uh, well, it's not really recreated like the real life thing. I've, I'm never really trying to recreate things like they are in real life. I'm just taking inspiration here and there. But uh, I think that the general feel of this place is very, very similar to the real life thing. So that's kind of what I was aiming for. Anyway, you can see that I'm uh, in here playing already live in the, in the in the game, so I can see the trams going through it. I, p I put just, uh, you'll probably see it in the time lapses, I put just a couple of very modern uh, apartment blocks on the opposite side of this road, so I can have some traffic going in there. I think I later actually converted this road so that it's going to be connected to the outside, which means that all the cars will have to go through this point, uh, you know, below this bridge, if they want to enter the city just so I can have some more traffic in uh, in this part for the cinematics, of course, right? So, using a lot of procedural objects in here, that's kind of clear already, don't really need to explain that. Even for the side supports of this bridge, um, again, using those uh, pillars from the Railway Replacer mod packs. So, it's these stone ones with also the brick top. Again, I'm going to get rid of the brick top because I'm only using it uh, basically as the as the side wall inside the bridge. The pedestrians are going to be looking at this wall. I didn't really want to use any different walls because I really like the texture of uh, this one. It's uh, it's very nice and it, uh, it's more or less similar to the texture that is on the bridge itself. Now the bridge itself is obviously procedural objects again and I had to scale it down quite a lot as well as these pillars. You can see that. I think that these bridge uh, arches are way larger if you if you place them in a, in their original state. Now I have to admit that I also didn't really bother that much with detailing the actual uh, area where the tracks are. So you know all kinds of signaling and all those kinds of things. It's probably going to be a lot uh, more crowded as we uh, progress in time with more lights and all those kinds of things. Obviously as we progress in time the tracks will definitely uh, receive uh, you know cables of their own so that we can have electric trains going in there. Obviously it's a bit early for that at this point in uh, in time. We are, like I said, somewhere in the 1920s, so steam, steam all the way, right? Now surfaces, a common theme for the Alton Grad series. I was not actually sure if we did any surfaces back in back in the last episode. Yeah, we did just just a couple for the palace on the top, but that was kind of easy. But we are back to the to the street level, to the dirty streets of Alton Grad, so we have to do the surfaces properly this time. And uh, again, it was kind of a headache in in this intersection, but uh, you know we are going to do 
something a bit more complicated still in this episode. So uh, in here it was kind of straightforward actually. It was just uh, putting down, uh, covering the asphalt with the cobblestone and putting these networks underneath the train tracks, uh, the tram tracks, right? These networks are obviously absolutely amazing. Without these networks, the the, the entire intersection, the entire place would uh, look completely different, honestly. So I'm really grateful that these uh, these networks are here because they just look amazing. They just look really, really good. So now back for the surfaces that are in front of the train station building itself. There's like a street that's going to be slightly sunken by just a couple of uh, tens of centimeters. And uh, the rest of the sidewalks, you can call them, are going to be done with these cobblestones. I'm not sure if you can call this a cobblestone. I'm not even sure if it's called cobblestone in the game. Probably, yeah. But uh, it's these uh, more regular stones as, uh, as the pavement in here. Because I figured that uh, the train station building might have been slightly more modern than the rest of the, of the streets of the city. So it might have, been, uh, might have been decorated with something slightly more fancy, right? Now we also must do some kind of uh, some kind of decorations in this place. So already preparing some planters for some flowers in this in this place. We also put the statue in there. Completely forgot to mention the statue. It felt nice to have some sort of a some sort of a statue kind of overlooking the entire square from from above from this elevated point. So you know. Uh, some some guy on a horse. I know that it's a you know real life statue. Yeah yeah sure, but uh, in this in this city it's obviously some unnamed uh, maybe hero, some politician, some ruler, someone like that. Right? Doesn't really matter. All right, so it's mostly straightforward detailing surfaces and all those kinds of things, as you can see. I'm making great use of these networks. Uh, I'm probably going to be using them a lot more, especially in fancier looking areas, which, uh, you know, surroundings of a train station definitely is, especially in a big city like this. So these kinds of decorative uh, networks are really, really nice. And uh, most of these networks are kind of an excuse for me to do the surfaces very, very quickly, especially on curved uh, areas, on corners, because like I said, uh, explained it many, many times before this, uh, when doing just these uh, square tiles, it's uh, really pain, painful to do these, uh, this, these curves. So it's much easier to just put some kind of a network, which you can obviously manipulate with Move It, and then uh, underneath it, just hide the edges of uh, some of those uh, tiles, some of those decals, uh, the squares of decals, right? So much, much uh, more convenient for me to do it like that. I'm uh, covering the edges of the tram tracks with this uh, with this decorative cobblestone as well, as you can see. So uh, it it looks it just looks good, and uh, it's going to more uh, it's going to more highlight the tracks going through the square, which is something that I actually do want because the trams are going to change the character of this uh, square definitely. I'm thinking that uh, this square was probably refurbished or reconstructed, reworked when uh, probably when the train station was constructed or maybe when the tram tracks uh, were put in here, which was probably a long, long time ago already at this point. It's not like the uh, the electric trams had to be the first, uh, you know, that the tracks were built for. So these tracks might have been here for um, a really long time, actually. Uh, you know, I don't really want to say like hundred of ye hundreds of years well, or a hundred years, but uh, maybe maybe they could have been here uh, well before the actual trains, but probably not. Probably the train station was here before the tracks. I'm not really sure about this, right? But I just wanted to I just wanted to make the the tracks for the tram really a nice part of this entire square, right? That's all. Also put a fountain in here and uh, did exactly what I did back uh, back in uh, episode five, I think. So put this uh, this decorative decal into a circle, kind of encircling the fountain, making some you know different kind of surface in there just to make it more interesting. Anyway, that's uh, that's kind of all for this episode. Actually, that's uh, that's pretty much all. We are just doing going to do some detailing, uh, railings, flowers, trees, you know, benches, all those kinds of little things. We are going to see that all in the cinematics. All right. So that is all for episode seven of Altengrad. Next episode, we are going to take a look at this square, but from a different perspective. We are going to finish this square, hopefully, and uh, just see how it's going to how it's going to finish the puzzle that is the downtown of the city, right? All right, so that was all. Thank you guys again for watching episode 7 of Altengrad. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then you can put a thumbs up underneath the video, share the video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I will see you with some next videos. Take care and goodbye.